Telling the story of Texas is a colossal task. Author Stephen Harrigan took on that challenge. The result, a nearly 900-page book called Big Wonderful Thing. It brings some new twists to tackling Texas history. And Stephen Harrigan, author of Big Wonderful Thing, is here with us today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, first thing people are going to notice is this is huge. Um, tell us a little bit about how long it took it t took you to write this. It took about six years, uh, off and on, but most yeah. mostly on. And uh, you know, it I'd hoped it would be shorter, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a big state with a big history, and this is the entire history of Texas. So it it took a while. So you just you found things along the way that you just said this has to go in these, this oh, little absolutely. snippet. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's just so many stories, so many, uh, so many. I mean, big characters: Sam Houston, Lyndon Johnson, Ann Richards. I mean, you know, a huge list of people to write about. And then there are, you know, just smaller things. You know, mm -hmm. people you haven't heard of, things you haven't heard of, like. Old Rip the Horny Toad, who was uh, entombed in the Eastland County Courthouse for 32 years, and uh, turns out he was supposedly alive when, mm -hmm. they, when they when they demolished the courthouse. I mean, weird things like that that I just couldn't keep out of the book. And so you have uh, written novels, yeah. s screenplays. Mm -hmm. um, when you tackle straightforward history like this, what's different? For in the in your process or in in the writing process to write history as opposed to a fiction. Well, a lot of my career has been writing you know, magazine articles and and novels, and so in both those cases, in, in the case of, of magazine journalism, of course, factual credibility is is, is the most important thing, but mm -hmm. also an ability to tell a story and make the reader feel like they're there and mm -hmm. they're, they're along for the ride. So I I was familiar to some degree with, with both sides of that because I, had to, I knew I had to get my facts straight and I knew I had to tell a story mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, from, the, from the sort of fictional side, from the novelist side and from the journalist side. And I tried to combine those two skills into making a book that I hope people will be interested in reading. They'll feel like it's fun to read. Mm -hmm. One review of it uh, called it woke history of Texas. <laughs> Have you seen that? Uh, I would, I, you know, I, people will have different opinions of what woke is, but how did you approach it differently uh, from other history books that you've seen? Because, you know, the history of Texas has been done before many times. Many times and, very, and done very well many times. And uh, I don't know, I don't know that I'm any more woke than anybody else. I mean, come on, you <laughs> yeah. look at me. But, but I, I, I tried to, I tried to keep my ear to the ground. I tried to, to, always at the front of my mind was the sense that, you know, we're living in a different time than some of the other books that have been written mm -hmm. about Texas history. You know, there are things you have to keep in, keep in mind, take into account, and you know, it's a more inclusive, it's a broader story, mm -hmm. a story in, about women as much as it is about men, about, you know, African Americans, about Native Americans, about, you know, you know Latinos and Hispanics, so it's, uh, it's a giant broad story, and it's, difficult to corral all that information and all those perspectives into mm -hmm. one volume, but I did what I could. And a lot of it uh, are, are little character snippets, like you mm -hmm. have the part, you have a part about uh, when Beyonce meets Selena. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. it, when people talk about, is that a historical moment? What, what, what are little moments like that? What do they show us about uh, the human condition? Or Well, or they show us a lot about not just the history of Texas, but the culture of Texas. And mm -hmm. the culture of Texas it's very much embedded in that, in that history. And so it's really important, I think, to tell the story of people like Catherine Ann Porter, you know, the great Texas novelist, or, or, or uh, Selena. Uh, you know, these people made a difference. Janis Joplin, mm -hmm. you know, Willie Nelson. I mean, uh, history, you know, it's, this is not just a political history. It's not a, it's not a hi history about battles and wars. It's about all those things mm -hmm. and all, all the people who have, have made may create, help create what is for better or worse a Texas identity. What I think is, is important in, in history today is to kind of avoid the great man history, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and you have dug into some characters that people might not know much about. Was there one that you could tell me that, you know, you did not know uh, about this person before you did this book and you can go, oh gosh, I had no idea and how interesting. Yeah, well, like one great example is this, uh, 
the Spanish nun, Sister uh, Maria Jesus de Agreda, mm -hmm. who never left her convent in Spain, but in the 17th century claimed to have, without leaving her body, to have bilocated to Texas mm. <laughs> and to have uh, appeared among the Humano and other Indian tribes yeah. there to, to tell them to, uh, to tell uh, Spanish missionaries from New Mexico mm -hmm. to come build missions in Texas. Yeah. And, you know, she had an effect on Texas history, even yeah. though she never left her convent in Spain. And there are people like that. Uh, there are a woman named Isabel Talon, who was a French woman with uh, LaSalle's, uh, you, know, col you know, attempted colony in Texas in the 1680s. Uh, you know, a fascinating woman who ended up being killed along with the rest of LaSalle's colonists, yeah. but who inspired the first poem we think that was ever written in Texas. Wow. And so there are, they're just fascinating little, you know, individuals and, and snippets of things all the way through that I found. And the saying that I wasn't born here, but I got here as soon as I can, it's been around for a while then. I well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Davy Crockett, <laughs> Sam Houston, I mean, there are lots of people who weren't born here who are sort of embody Texas in a way. Uh, so you're going to be also part of the Texas Tribune Festival, part sure, of the, yeah. um, the free open Congress part of it. Right. Somebody comes to see you, what do you hope they get out of uh, your, your discussion well, there? I'm, well, my discussion, I'm going to have a discussion with uh, H.W. With, with Brands and with S.C. Gwen, Bill, Bill Brands and Sam Gwen, who are both fantastic writers and historians, and Emily McCuller from Texas Monthly is going to moderate that. And I just think it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. I just hope people will enjoy a conversation about uh, writing history and what it takes to do that and what the pitfalls are. And, what the you know, joys and sorrows of it are. Nice. Well, Stephen Harrigan's new book, Big Wonderful Thing. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Really great to be here.